Good evening and welcome to Next on News Vision. I'm Peter DeWetter. And I'm Jordan Cerullo. Thank you for joining us. Just when we thought the housing issue at the Cloisters Miami was over, new problems are surfacing. Residents were finally able to move in on Friday after waiting for more than a month. But now that students are all moved in, they are facing some major problems. Some of the construction is still not done, bathrooms have major sanitary issues, and some rooms have no safety and security measures installed. And some parents are now allegedly taking legal action. Find out more tonight at 7. Have you ever thought about living in a treehouse? Well, one senior citizen made that dream a reality. Shawnee Chasser lived in a treehouse for nearly two decades, but she never got approval to build it in the first place. And now officials are saying the structure is illegal. How the back and forth battle between Chasser and the county ended tonight at 7. Well, I can't imagine li li living in a treehouse for all of those years. You know, especially with those muggy nights. Speaking of which, you know, it's finally fall, and I want to know what the weather's going to be tonight. Student meteorologist Quinn Davidson joins us now to tell us about tonight's forecast. Quinn, is it going to rain tonight? Well, we cannot rule out a few showers trickling into our area, Jordan. We do have the majority of those showers and storms in the interior portions of Alligator Alley in southwest Florida, so definitely not much in Miami-Dade County right now. However, we can expect that to potentially change throughout the night. But according to this forecast, the rainfall estimates for the end of this weekend could range anywhere from one to two inches and pockets of two to four. More tonight at 7 p.m. with meteorologist Charlotte Carl. Thank you, Quinn. You know, I prefer water to stay in a water park instead of rain, but I don't think Zoo Miami would agree. One company is pushing to have a water park built on the Zoo Miami property, and many Zoo Miami officials, Zoo Miami, many Zoo Miami officials are not happy about it. Tune in tonight at 7 to find out more about the potential plans and why they are so controversial. And speaking of animals in Miami, a new law is going into effect that will allow Miami-Dade residents to own a certain breed of dog that has been outlawed for more than 30 years. Florida passed a law banning pit bulls in Miami-Dade County following the attack of a 7-year-old girl in 1989. But this Sunday, the ban will be lifted. Governor Ron DeSantis signed the new law into effect. However, some areas can still ban certain dog breeds. Find out where those restrictions can take place tonight on News Vision. I don't know about you, Peter, but I think pit bulls are adorable, and I'd love to have one of my own. You know, they're not for me, but speaking of which, you know, let's go to sports. Over the summer, the men's and women's basketball teams traveled across the pond for a preseason tournament. Sports reporter Taryn Jacobs joins us now to tell us more. Thanks, Peter. I'm Taryn Jacobs. After an amazing run in the NCAA tournament last season, the University of Miami men's and women's basketball teams traveled overseas to continue showcasing their talents over the summer. Canes Hoops took the court in Europe for their first foreign tour in four years. The trip strengthened the team dynamic, giving them a head start before the season tips off in November. Sports anchor Wyatt Kopelman has more on how the team bonded across the world tonight at 7. And one former UM football star, Robert Bailey, started a foundation in 2022 after he lost his daughter, Kennedy, to suicide. The former football player founded the Kennedy Kids Foundation to bring awareness to suicide rates among young children. In September, just one year after Kennedy's death, the organization held its first ever 5K run. And the event was organized by one of Kennedy's best friends. I feel like I'm still helping her, even though she's not here with me. I feel like I can still feel her through all these events and seeing the happiness that it puts on people's face and now that I know I'm making a difference and this is what she would have wanted, it makes me feel great. And even greater, hundreds were there to support the cause. Find out just how much this race had an impact on the community tonight on News Vision. Peter and Jordan, back to you. Thank you, Taryn. Looks like we've got a great show ahead of us tonight on News Vision. Don't forget to tune in at 7 p.m. Thank you for joining us for Next on News Vision. We'll see you back here next week live at 530.